How's it going everyone? Uh, welcome back to the channel. So today is quite an exciting day. You get to sort of show off and go through all the parts we've been collecting for the last 10-12 months for the Mark IV Super Build. Um, so I'm going to head down, down to Willie's. Um, I'm going to lay everything out and show you everything we've got and I'll get him to sort of explain everything as far as uh, the motor is concerned. Because um, this is sort of uh, his brainchild, the old 5S. Uh, he's already built one. Um, successfully in his Celica. Um so yeah he, he was being the big push towards doing this and he's the man with all the knowledge on the 3S so we'll go down there uh, and Willie will sort of talk through everything to go with the motor and we'll show you everything that we've bought. So obviously it's been a while between updates on this car but we haven't been doing nothing. We've been buying lots of things. It's the thing with life, you've either got time or money. If you don't have any time, spend your money. <laughs> so while we've been busy, we've been shopping. So this is not even all of it, but it's a good chunk of our haul. That's a pretty cool pile of parts, eh? That certainly is. This is uh, quite exciting. I've never had this much stuff like ready at once, you know what I mean? Like I've always nickel and dimed myself, buying little bits at a time. So we thought we'd better do a video of it while we have everything here. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll break it down now into what's going into the motor uh, before we get that sent off. So we'll start with the cylinder head. Uh, as I've shown you guys before, we are using the 3SGE Beams cylinder head. Uh, this is the Gen 5 or the black top, depending on what you'd like to call it. These are really good um, high-flowing cylinder head from the factory. And compared to the previous generation 3S engines, these blow it out of the water. And um, I've had them on the dyno comparing the later model one compared to the early one, and they just they're just amazingly, um, amazingly uh, better than the, than the previous ones. And we're just going to do a simple kind of head package with this one. Um, we're not going to go too extreme. And uh, the aim of this car is an all-rounder, so it wants to make we want to make good power, but we want to have really good response and good all-round, um, good all-round power throughout the rev range. So what we've done. Just going to leave the, fa the, the cams factory and with the 3SGE you get two different kinds of cams so the automatic and the manual ones are different and so these are manual cams so they are bigger and they've got 11mm lift um, the auto automatic ones are still quite aggressive for a factory cam but a little bit smaller so in the previous engine I've done I used automatic ones as I wanted a broader uh, spread of torque this one will make a little more power, so we want to go with the bigger ones. The heads are slightly different. Well, they are the same casting. They have bigger buckets and bigger machining for the buckets and also deeper uh, to accommodate the bigger cams, which gives you bigger scope to put bigger cams in it down the line, should we want to do that. And we've also put a set of basic upgraded uh, valve springs um, into the head to help look after it at high RPM and high boost. And these manual ones also have titanium valves, which is pretty cool. And the, the big advantage of these is dual, ver dual variable valve timing on the intake and the exhaust. And we've also had my good friend Adam, who has done a really nice job porting these. Moving on, uh, we have the crankshaft. This is a factory 5S FE crankshaft. There's like a few ways you can build a 5S. Um, what you can do is use 3S rods and then machine the crank down to fit them. And that gives you a bigger choice of connecting rods. I've chosen not to do that. I've chosen to keep the factory crank as it is. So all we're gonna do is send it off to the machinist. He's gonna give it a clean and a polish and check it over so there's nothing fancy about that. They are a very strong crank and have been known to handle a thousand horsepower. I've never heard of one breaking. And then we have your gasket. Obviously a pretty important part of any turbocharged car and you need to basically be aware that you can't use any 3S head gasket with this because it's a longitudinal motor the water flows through the engine differently compared to a transverse motor, which most 3S's were. So basically you need to use an Alteza head gasket. 
However, we are enlarging the bore, so you can't use a factory head gasket. And Apexi had the right thing for us. So, hoping that it'll, it's a multi layer steel head gasket, there's nothing crazy about it. So, that should work nicely. And we're almost rebuilding the motor. It's silly not to put some brand new, genuine OE cam belt and idlers and tensioners on there. Um, that's all genuine Toyota stuff. Uh, they're obligatory ARP bolts. So we have, as I said before, we're going to 11mm head studs, which is actually a factory head stud for a 4G63 Evo. And they are the right length, so they will go straight in. And then some 3S um, main stud caps, sorry, main stud um, bolts for, for that. Now we come across to possibly the most interesting part which is the piston and connecting rod combination. Now, USA and China get along really well, so we thought why not use a combination of American pistons, Chinese rods. Now when I first heard about these, I kind of turned my nose up at them. However, they are a really good rod. Uh, so I've used these in two of my previous engine builds and they've been absolutely perfect. And um, if you're wondering, most um, connecting rod manufacturers are made in China anyway. These ones don't hide it, they're definitely Chinese, um, but they've got genuine ARP bolts in them. And in my other motor, I've used these and it's got 650 newton meters of torque, lots of boost, and I haven't blown it up yet. <laughs> so these are a, a 5S rod, and there's only a couple of manufacturers making rods to suit the 5S. So the 5S have a, a bigger big end than the 3S, which is why you can't use the 3S rods. Um, the rods are in fact the same length. Moving to our piston. This is a custom piston, which we basically need. No one makes an off-the-shelf 5S GTE beams piston. So these are made by Trom in the USA, and I had um, PSI Racing uh, organised that for me and um, so I recommend going through him to organise any pistons or any 3S parts. He makes some really cool uh, drag racing 3S powered stuff so he knows what he's doing and I use those in my other motor and they worked really nice. Everything bolted together exactly as it should and that will give us a compression ratio of around 9.5 which will mean it's like slightly higher than maybe what you'd use for a turbo car. Uh, so we're going to run flex fuel on this engine and basically we can still run pump gas as well with that compression ratio and obviously with ethanol we can run as much boost as we like without getting into detonation so I think that is a good compromise. Coming over here just some general engine building bits so we've got ACL bearings those are the big ends and those are the mains and some thrusts and then a brand new genuine Toyota 5S oil pump. Those are a high flow pump uh, compared to the rest of the 3S range. And that will work with our sump situation. So I think it's silly not to buy a brand new uh, Toyota oil pump. They're actually really cheap. So that all should work out nicely. And then we've also got some Bosch 1600cc injectors they will flow enough fuel for our power level and then coming down the line we have our turbocharger this is a Borg Warner SX200E something like that so it's effectively the same design as the EFR except they're uh, a cheaper material and they're uh, general bearing rather than ball bearing um, this is sort of rated to 500 horsepower which I think to start off with will be a good match for our 2.2 litre motor. It may end up being too small down the line, but I think for now it's going to work really nicely. It's a twin scroll manifold, so that will help with response. And a billet compressor wheel, which looks pretty cool. And a tyre wastegate to control the boost. Right, so we'll go over what we've done to the block and some history on it. So this block is a 5S, and so obviously they're a 5S FE, poverty spec thing. 
You could use a 3S block. There's no reason you can't put the 2.2 litre crank into the 3S block. The blocks are the same general architecture. And so you can use either. The 5S though is a stronger block. Um, the, the 3S blocks are well known for well known for failing around 500 horsepower. They tend to crack bores due to the thin walls. The 5S block has a thicker wall and also a harder material. And so these are, are renowned for holding a lot more power, up to a thousand horsepower I've seen on the internet. How reliable they are, I don't know. We'll find out. So that's why we've chosen to use this block. And while it bolts up to the head and everything like that, there's a few little differences between the, um, the 3S and the 5S. And obviously we're turbocharging this motor, so um, it had no oil feed for the turbo. So we have machined um, a hole there into the gallery for the turbocharge at oil feed. And another Achilles heel of the 3S 5S series is blowing head gaskets. <laughs> it's actually a pretty easy fix though. These have 10 mil head studs from factory and for a non-turbo car they work perfectly well. You put some boost into them and their head bolts stretch and you blow head gaskets. I've done it many times. However, a simple upgrade to an 11 mil head stud uh, effectively uh, solves all of those issues until you get up to running re really silly power. I've played with these things for years and since I upgraded to an 11mm head stud I have never blown a head gasket. <laughs> Touch wood. So as well as drilling out the block and tapping that to M11 you need to drill out the holes in the head as well. So we have done that as well. And a big thing we've also done with this block is cryogenically treat it. So this freezes it, so it gets really cold and the science behind it is a wee bit of a mystery to me but um, they say it rearranges the grain structure to make it stronger. It's a well established technology in the aviation and aerospace industry so it's obviously useful. Um, so we're just doing everything we can to keep this block nice and strong. We tend to push it and tend to push it pretty hard so um, yeah, we're just doing everything we can to, to keep it in one piece. So we're going to take this down to the machinist shortly and he will enlarge these bores to suit our pistons and also uh, check the, the tunnel bore and make sure that's all nice and, um, nice and round and nice and um, even along all of the bores. Uh, we're going to run ARP uh, studs in all of the main caps and so this does have the potential to um, squish the bores um, for the tunnel a little bit. And um, that is about it. So Willie's gone over the motor side of things and uh, well, I guess I'll go over the rest of it. So we have got some new suspension here. We've opted for some uh, MCA Reds. Um, these were sort of custom specced out for us uh, based off our needs. Um, so a bit of a discussion with them about the weight Obviously going from a six cylinder down to a four, and then we run extended track with arms as well, so they did a bit of calculation on that, um, and have come up with some settings and some spring rates for us. Um, it was a bit of a bit of a mix because as you said, wanted to use this car for a few different events, so they're like, well, we'd prefer to spec it out for either race or rally or drift or whatever. Um, you wanting to play around with lots of different things means we'll just do a bit of an average, but so we've gone for... Uh, 28 kilo springs in the front and 9 kilo springs in the rear. Um, I personally run 25 kilos in the front of my Mark III Super and I think it's great. Um, used to, I've progressively gone from 16 to 20 to 25 and I definitely have felt it has needed the higher spring rates uh, as I've gone up, uh, especially with the extended track with arms. Um, so yeah, we'll get these in, we'll see how that happens feels but I think that's probably a very good place to start anyway with the spring rates for this car. Uh, you might have noticed in the background this fella. Um, so Facebook Marketplace. It's brilliant or it's terrible. I don't know it depends on which way you see it. You might have noticed obviously the other videos we were putting a Jericho on the car. Well I've got a Samsung and a Mark III Supra and I quite like it. And this popped up for sale on Facebook Marketplace. So you know what? I think we've got to do it. So we are no longer going to be using the Jericho. We have a Samsung sequential. And this one 
is uh, even just a little bit better than mine because it's got a five five speed. Um, so fifth is still one to one. So I think that'll be a really good thing for this car being going down to the four cylinder, um, having five close gear ratios. I think it'll be a really good thing for keeping this on boost and keeping it in the uh, power range we want. So the bell housing that we ordered um, did fit our Jericho, but did not fit our Samsonis. So we've had to make up and adapt a plate to, well, get the Samsonis to the sort of Muncie style pattern, I think it's called, that um, most dog boxes and stuff use. So yeah, that's five-speed Samsonis sequential. Well, I must say I'm extremely excited about this. I've already got one and I just know how great they are. Um, GK Tech handbrake, opted for the gold. This will match... Uh, I'll say it now, I guess, you don't know, but this this is what the roll cage is going to be painted in. It's going to be gold, so we have the, the gold and black theme for this car. Um, and then, I guess, transferring the power, we have a, a Tilton uh, Quartermaster, I believe it is. Um, I think we've gone for the rally discs with this, which is slightly thicker. Um, I'm not sure the exact difference between the rally disc and the normal disc, but that's what we've gone for. Um, so yeah, this was custom specced out for us by uh, MRP, Manum Racing Products. Um, so it was all custom made, flywheel um, and clutch set up. And we have our Tilton uh, release bearing um, as well, which was also provided by MRP. So we're ending up with a, quite a spicy unit here. I'm very excited for this build. It's going to be quite cool. Um, I do have one more thing which I'll show you in a minute once we've cleared this away, um, but yeah, very cool. So carrying on with the uh, handling side of things, we're also going to be running these new arms from Agile Performance. Um, so these feature a live adjustment on the rod end, um, so you can run an eccentric lockout on your subframe and use this for your live adjustment and that way you keep these nice and tight, uh, your alignment shouldn't sort of wander out of spec if you like hit a bump too hard or anything like that and it should have a pretty good uh, range of alignment for you as well. So these also use Mark III Supra ball joint as well, just making replacement a little bit easier being a bolt on thing. Um, so quite excited about these, uh, these are a new product. Uh, if you want any more information about those uh, be sure to check out uh, Agile Performance NZ on uh, Instagram, Facebook, website, all that. Now, I don't actually have it here, but we have also, to go with all the uh, go, got some slow. Um, so we've got a set of uh, factory uh, turbo brakes for the Mark IV Super as well, so the full pot, two pot. Um, so they're not here yet. I'd love to include them in this video, but I'll just tell you about it instead. So yeah, we've got those too. So uh, all in all, this is going to be a really cool package, I believe, um, handling-wise. will be the most agile Supra. <laughs> Uh, thanks very much for watching guys uh, and be sure to subscribe if you want to follow along with the rest of this build.